Welcome back. So now that we have an idea in this region what we want to put into application service. Let's make it. Now we're going to put the application service under customer app core application services, the folder we made earlier. Now instead of just making an implementation and start moving the code directly, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to start up with an interface. The interface is going to represent what should be inside a customer application service here in our case. So we're going to start up by making an interface right here. I'll just right click the folder, add new file. I'll call it, uh, I'll, I'll select interface and I'll call it iCustomerService. Now, the reason that I'm going to make a customer service as an interface first is we might as well just get used to this. This is needed when we work with dependency injection. It's also needed when we want to do some good testing of our code later on. So when we, do, when we start doing tester and development, we might need some markups. So we need interfaces. So just get used to it. Also, when you start working in Teams, it's a lot easier just to start up by defining the interface instead of defining the implementation. So just considering what should be in here without even starting to talk about how it works when it's in there. That's very powerful. So that's why we make this interface here as a beginning. We jump back to the printer and then we start looking at what should be put over there. Well, let's just start out with the update customer and looking at this, I'm kind of, I don't want that many properties inside my update customer because it might end up being a huge amount of properties if we have a more complex business object. So instead I'm just going to pass in a customer and I'm going to get back a customer. That's how I'm going to make my update customer inside my application service right here. So I'm going to start out by saying I'm going to return a customer. That's the goal of it when I'm done. And command data control dot and I can then use the using statement right here to explain that the customer is located inside the core down here. Sweet. Then I'm going to just put in the actual name of the function, which is update customer right here. Let me put that in here, update customer. And what I want to send in is just a customer. And let's just call it customer update. Just to kind of explain that this customer is the updated version of the customer that I'm passing in right here. Sweet. So what else do we have? Jumping back to the printer and scrolling down. We have a find customer by ID and I'm just going to grab this entire method right here because there's nothing in that method that I need to do anything about. It can just be put directly into the interface. What else do I need? Coming back to the printer. There's also a way to get all the customers. Let's grab it, put it in here. There's a one small thing I need to do here to kind of complete this guy. I need to import the generic list. So I'll control or command click this guy using the import generic right here. There we go. So now we have an update and we have a read. What else do we need? Jumping back here, we have a delete. Of course we have a delete. And I'm going to again do the same thing. I want to actually let my delete right here. I want that to return the customer that was just deleted. Now you could also just return an int that just gives you maybe an error code if you need it. You can do a lot of things here. I'm just going to for now keep it so that it returns the customer if it's deleted. If it doesn't delete the customer, it's going to return just null, no customer. I'll use that as an error later on. What else do we have? Now we have, we have update, we have read, we have delete, we of course need create to make the full CROD setup. Now here's something where you have to make a choice. We can decide that we want a way to create a customer instance. Notice I'm, this is just creating a customer inf instance with some information. That could be powerful later on to kind of hide how we create a customer instance so we don't need to use the new keyword inside our UI. But it also it brings a lot again about parameters. We need to pass in a lot of parameters to kind of make this work. But for the fun of it, for now, let's just put this directly into our service right here inside the interface and let's just call it, let's just put it in here and instead of calling it create, let's just call it new customer like this, just to kind of explain that we're just getting an instance. We're not actually getting, we're not saving any customer right here. We're just getting an instance of a customer. Because we also have a function, if I go back, called save. And that's actually the function that goes in and saves the customer to our data source. So let's just try and copy this guy as well. And I'm going to rename that guy as well. I'm going to call him create. Just to keep the naming strategy, create, read, update, delete. So I'm just going to call this guy create right here. So now we have a good interface. And if I want to kind of put this in here, this is new customer. That's what we want right here. And then the rest of it is pretty much the CRUD setup. So 
create. And here, instead of the update, let's just move that down a few pieces here. Then we have read, right? Read. And then we have update. And of course, that guy should return a customer right here. That's kind of why it fails. Customer. And then we have the lead in the end down here. So now we have the full CRUD set up again, just like we did with the repository and the UI before. Sweet. But this is just an interface now. This is just an explanation about what we can do with the customer service. What can the UI do with our application core? This is the access point for the UI to the application core. Okay? So that's the application service. Let's end this lesson now. We've set up an interface. Now we just need to implement it in the next couple of lessons. See you next time. Have fun.